Hi everyone, welcome to another informative video of NS Pharma. In today's video, we are going to study 10 important questions from pharmacology. This video will be very helpful for those pharmacists who is preparing for GPAT, NIPAR, government pharmacist exam and other pharmacist competitive exam. So let's start the class. First question, tetracycline act by tetracycline act by options are option a inhibiting protein synthesis option b interfering in cell wall synthesis option c altering the permeability of cell membrane option d all of the above what is the mechanism of action of tetracycline we know that tetracycline is an antibiotic first of all we will see the answer the answer is option a that is inhibiting protein synthesis by inhibiting protein synthesis okay tetracycline will act by inhibiting protein synthesis here in this slide antibiotics are mainly classified into three types based on the mechanism of action okay first one is cell wall synthesis inhibitors okay cell wall synthesis inhibitor the second one is nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors okay and the third one protein synthesis inhibitor these are the three types of antibiotics okay cell wall synthesis inhibitor nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor protein synthesis inhibitors the first one is cell wall synthesis inhibitor in this rectangle you can see the drugs coming under this category the first one is beta lactams beta lactam will inhibit cell wall synthesis beta lactam antibiotic include penicillins cephalosporins carbapenems and monobactams okay along with that one vancomycin and bazithrazine also will inhibit cell wall synthesis okay vancomycin and bazithrazine also inhibit cell wall synthesis the next one is cell membrane leakage that is polymyxin polymyxin will cause cell membrane leakage okay polymyxin will cause cell membrane leakage it's also related to cell wall synthesis inhibition next category is nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor the first one folate synthesis inhibitor that is sulfonamide and trimethoprim folate synthesis inhibitor includes sulfonamides and trimethoprim sulfonamides will inhibit the conversion of para amino benzoic acid that is PABA into dihydrofolic acid that is DHFA so the conversion of PABA into DHFA is uh, inhibited by sulfonamide through that mechanism folate synthesis is inhibited and nucleic acid synthesis inhibition is occur because folic acid is necessary for nucleic acid synthesis in case of trimethoprim it will inhibit the conversion of dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid so trimethoprim will inhibit the conversion of dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid through that mechanism it will inhibit that folate synthesis and inhibit nucleic acid synthesis next one is dna gyrase inhibition dna gyrase inhibition dna gyrase inhibition example is quinolones example of for quinolones are nalidixic acid ciprofloxacin etc okay ciprofloxacin is coming under fluoroquinolones okay so dna gyrase inhibition is also uh, will result in, in the nucleic acid synthesis inhibition the next category is dna dependent rna polymerase inhibition that is example rifampicin that is anti tubercular drug rifampicin dna dependent rna polymerase inhibition this is the nucleic acid synthesis inhibition the drugs coming under this category are folate synthesis inhibitors dna gyrase inhibitors then rna polymerase inhibitors cell wall synthesis inhibitors include beta lactam beta lactams vancomycin bacitracin and polymyxins and the last category that is third category is protein synthesis inhibitor protein synthesis inhibition may occur through 30s subunit of ribosome or 50s subunit of ribosome okay through 30s ribosome examples are tetracyclines tetracycline that was the question and the next category is aminoglycoside in case of aminoglycoside uh, there are too many drugs 
one of the drug is streptomycin streptomycin will bind with the 30s ribosome only okay note it streptomycin coming under amino glycoside will bind with the 30s ribosome only okay and it will inhibit protein synthesis while all the other amino glycoside other than streptomycin that is gentamicin tobramycin all these drugs will bind with 30s and 50s okay it will bind with 30s also 50s and 30s 50s interface okay and inhibit protein synthesis okay one more time i will repeat streptomycin coming under amino glycoside will bind with the ts ribosome and inhibit protein synthesis while all other amino glycoside other than streptomycin will bind with the ts 50s and 30s 50s interface and inhibit protein synthesis while tetracycline will bind with the ts ribosome only and inhibit protein synthesis other uh, protein synthesis inhibitors include 50s subunit inhibitors they are they are macrolide antibiotic that is clarithromycin azithromycin all this and then clindamycin linezolide chloramphenicol then streptogranins these are the different antibiotics which will inhibit protein synthesis through binding with 50s subunit Okay, hope you understood this question now we are moving to the next question if you have any query regarding this you can ask in the comment section okay next question question number two pharmacokinetics deals with the study of pharmacokinetics deals with the study of okay options are rate of metabolism of drug rate of distribution of drug absorption distribution metabolism and excretion of drug option d rate of drug action what is the correct answer here pharmacokinetics pharmacokinetics means ADME of a drug ADME means absorption distribution metabolism and excretion that is ADME okay the correct answer is option C is the correct answer pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug that is the pharmacokinetics what the body does to the drug okay that is called pharmacokinetics okay what the body does to the drug and pharmacodynamics that is what the drug does to the body that is the pharmacodynamics okay now we are moving to the next question question number three which one of these is a indirect acting adrenergic drug the question indirect acting adrenergic drug okay options are phenylephrine option b f ephedrine option c isoprenaline option d amphetamine and ephedrine the correct answer for this question that is which one of these is a indirect indirect acting adrenergic drug the correct answer is option d that is amphetamine and ephedrine okay amphetamine and ephedrine here it's mentioned indirect acting adrenergic agonists are classified into three types three types mainly one is adrenergic agonist that's acting directly acting that is direct acting adrenergic drug direct acting adrenergic agonist then next category is indirect acting adrenergic agonist then third one is mixed action that is it will act through direct and indirect so first one is direct acting adrenergic agonist second one is indirect acting adrenergic agonist third category is mixed acting adrenergic agonist first one the what do you mean by direct acting agonist direct acting agonist will act on alpha and beta receptors they will act through alpha or beta receptors examples are epinephrine norepinephrine phenylephrine etc okay epinephrine norepinephrine phenylephrine all are will act through alpha and beta receptors or alpha or beta receptors so that is called directly acting so what about indirectly acting indirectly acting adrenergic agonists cause the release of norepinephrine they will make the release of norepinephrine from the cytoplasm or vesicles okay they will cause the release of norepinephrine they will cause the release of norepinephrine that is the indirect acting from the cytoplasm and or vesicles examples are amphetamine and thiramine amphetamine and thiramine is coming under indirect acting agonist i mean adrenergic agonist and the next one is mixed action mixed action means uh, 
example is ephedrine ephedrine is actually is coming under mixed acting agonist that is it will act indirectly and also it will act through directly so the answer here is uh, amphetamine is an indirect acting directly it said ephedrine is a mixed acting that is it acts through directly and also indirectly so the answer is option d okay ephedrine and amphetamine ephedrine is actually is mixed acting it has an action direct and also it has indirect action so the correct answer is amphetamine and ephedrine one more time i will repeat what is indirect acting indirect acting agonist will cause the release of norepinephrine from the cytoplasm or vesicles examples are amphetamine thiramine okay and ephedrine is also coming under this one next question question number four digoxin is useful in the treatment of what is the use of digoxin options are hypertension option b congestive heart failure or chf next one is edema and last question, option is all of the above what is the use of digoxin this is a simple question we know that uh, digoxin is used in chf that is congestive heart failure it is act by inhibiting sodium potassium atpas enzyme of myocardial fibers digoxin will bind with the uh, sodium potassium ATAPase enzyme of myocardial fibers and it will inhibit the action of sodium potassium ATPase enzyme. Question number 5 tricyclic antidepressant that is TCA act by tricyclic antidepressants act by options are blocking the reuptake for norepinephrine blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine option B inhibiting the enzyme MAO option c receptor mechanism option d selectively blocking reuptake of serotonin what is the mechanism of tricyclic antidepressant the correct answer is option a that is blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine we studied this one in the classification of antidepressant tca is coming under one of the class of antidepressant this tca or tricyclic antidepressant will act by blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine and also it has an action of that is uh, it will inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin then another category was there that is ssri that is selectively serotonin reuptake inhibitor that is the option d SSRI is the option D. Then uh, first option is the TCA blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine. Now we are moving to the next question which is called British anti-levicide. British anti-levicide. Options are serine, diflose, dimercaprol. Option D, meclorethamine, which is called British anti-levicide. The correct answer is option C that is dimercaprol. Dimercaprol. Question number A. 7. Typhoid fever is caused by. Typhoid fever is caused by. Options are Salmonella typhi. Option B is Staphylococcus aureus. Option C is Streptococcus viridiens. Option D Streptococcus ficaris. Out of this, which is causing typhoid fever? The correct answer is option A that is Salmonella typhi. Okay. Question number 8. Nistatin is principally effective in. Nistatin is a an antifungal drug nistatin is principally effective in option a candida albicans option b cryptococcus histoplasma option c blastomyces option d all of the above nistatin nistatin we are using in the treatment of candida albicans or it is principally effective in case of candida candida albicans liver dopa is converted in body into Levodopa is converted in the body into options are option A active metabolite, option B inactive radiary excretable metabolite, option C polar metabolite, option D none of the above. Levodopa is converted in the body into option A is the correct answer it is converted into active metabolite. We know that levodopa is converted to dopamine by DDC that is dopa decarboxylase enzyme and to 3 methyl dopa that's by count catechol transferase next question question number 10 which one of these is a not hepatotoxic which one of these is not hepatotoxic okay options are isoniacid option b rifampicin option c paracetamol option d diflunizal okay 
the correct answer for this question we know that all the option that is option a option b option c will cause hepatotoxicity the correct answer is option d diflonisal diflonisal is an nsid coming under nsid non steroidal anti inflammatory drug it is an salicylic acid derivative salicylic acid derivative thank you very much for watching this video hope you understood all the questions here is the bonus question for you the ratio of carbidopa levodopa combination used in the treatment of parkinsonism is we know that carbidopa levodopa combinations are used in the treatment of parkinsonism we cannot use levodopa alone but the question is what is the ratio of combination of carbidopa levodopa in the treatment of parkinsonism option a 1 is to 5 option b 4 is to 1 option c 1 is to 10 option d 3 is to 7 you can comment your answer okay thank you